In the last episode, I showed you how to make this awesome little machine that will make every single casing that you're ever going to need automatically. And in today's episode, you'll be learning how to automatically harvest kelp and turn some of that kelp into conveyor belts so you'll never run out. My name is Hobble and welcome back my friends to Hobble Creates. And if you are new here, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. But let's jump into today's tutorial. So as with all of my contraptions, we're going to be keeping this within one chunk. As you can see here, I have marked out the center of our chunk. It's seven blocks in one direction, eight blocks in the other. Minecraft is weird. There is no center of a chunk. So we're going to make do. So we're going to have a contraption that is seven blocks wide in each direction. So from this middle block, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to take us right up to the chunk edge. We're going to do the same on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Then we're going to keep going, and we're going to turn this into a nice little 7x7 seven seven cross. Then coming to any side of our cross now, we're going to add 2 to this side. We're going to add 2 to that side, and we're going to repeat this all the way around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect all of these corners then up like so. It's not the most efficient circle you're going to see. There is a much better way to do a circle. I just think that this farm is going to look the coolest. In a slightly off shape, it's going to look really, really nice. Then taking your building block, you're going to fill in all of this inside area. And that's going to make ourselves a nice little platform for us to plant some kelp. Next, we're going to take some glass. Now... Technically, this doesn't need to be glass. You can use any block here. If you want to see inside your farm, then obviously you're going to want to use glass. But there's no reason why we can't really just go around and add some stone bricks. But what we're going to do is we're going to build a two high wall all the way around our perimeter. Then once you've got your glass perimeter, the next step is to actually flood this entire area with water sources. So we're going to come to one of the sides here. We're going to place down one water source. We're going to skip one. We're going to add in another water source. And what that'll do is that'll make an infinite water source here where you can refill your bucket, skip one, come back. And we can do this all the way around. And you'll end up with one layer that looks like this. Now we're going to do the same again for this next layer up. Again, you can skip one pull from the middle that's going to give you your refilling water bucket now we're at the point in the tutorial where i realized i've forgotten a step so we're going to go ahead and add that in now what we're going to do is we're going to come to one of our sides and we're going to break two glass blocks and we're going to put down a door i'm going to go for the glass door because it kind of fits our theme a little bit but this is going to allow us very easy access in here then so we can come in and we can come back later and add in our kelp our next step is we actually need to put a roof on this farm. Otherwise, once the kelp grows, we're actually going to start creating new water sources and everything will start flooding out. So what we're going to do is we're going to come along all of our glass blocks now and we're going to pop down a building block. And after that, then we'll need to come in and add in our roof. Then once you've put your roof on, we're going to come to one of the sides and we're going to count one block, two, three, four five six seven and on this eighth block here we're going to remove it and this is where we're going to have our contraption that is going to go through this hole and it's going to go harvest all of our kelp so speaking of the contraption why don't we set a little bit of that up now so come into the hole we're going to take some radial chassis we're just going to build this up like so Next, we need to take ourselves a nice deep breath because we're about to go swimming. So with super glue in our offhand, we are going to take some linear chassis and we are going to build this across now to our wall where we can actually put on our mechanical harvesters. Then with super glue still equipped, we're going to take our mechanical harvesters and we're going to attach those to each of our linear chassis. Then as an added measure of safety, we're going to take our wrench and we're going to crouch down and we're going to scroll all of these linear chassis at the same time all the way down to one. And while we're under here, we can actually remove this bottom radial chassis as we don't actually need that one to be connected. Now that we've kind of finished most of our building underwater, we can actually take this time to actually plant some kelp. Now, you can either place it down by hand, or if you've got builder's ones in your mod pack, you can put the kelp into your offhand, one little right click, and we've placed kelp on every kelpable surface. Now, we're at this point in the build where we can actually make a schematic of this and scale this up infinitely. All we need to do is take this entire schematic, place it down on top of this one where the kelp is actually planted on this stone brick layer here. And you can take this all the way up to sky limit as long as you kind of save a little space now for what we're going to be doing on top here. You can pretty much just take it all the way up and it's all within one chunk. But once you've kind of made this as high as you want, you're going to take yourself a mechanical bearing and we're going to be plugging this on top of our radial chassis. We're going to hold down crouch to make sure it's facing away from us. We're going to jump and we're going to place it down. Now with super glue in our off hand, we're going to take one more of our linear chassis and we're just going to plug it into this radial chassis right here. That's because we need to put a barrel down on the side of it and a portable storage interface on the top. Then on top of our bearing, we're just going to pop down a vertical gearbox and this is where you can plug it into any kind of power source. As you can see now, we are harvesting all of that kelp that grew and it should be getting stored 
in our barrel here. Yes, it is. So let's unplug for a moment and we're going to put down our unloading mechanism. So we've got our interface here. We need to skip one block, two block on this block right here. We need to put down another portable storage interface. Then on the side of our new interface, we're going to add in a belt that is about six blocks long and we're just going to belt that up. Now on this belt, this is where we're going to be importing all of our power. We're going to be taking power for our kelp machine from this, and we're also going to be powering every other thing from this main belt here. Now on this belt, right next to where we've got the barrel, we're going to have an item vault. This is going to act as a kind of buffer for all of our kelp to go into. That way we're not limited by how many kelp that we can pull out of our machine while we wait for things to get cooked. Now many times in my Minecraft playthroughs, I have thought that you cook kelp with lava, because obviously you throw them into a furnace and they get cooked, that my friends, is wrong. You actually need to use a campfire, so we're going to pop down a temporary block here, we're going to pop a campfire on the top, and then connected to that campfire holding down crouch, we're going to pop down an encased fan. So of course next up we need somewhere for that dried kelp to go, so we're going to pop down a nice big 2x2 item vault. We're going to come to the other side, right here we're going to hold down crouch and we're going to set a filter here to say only pick up dried kelp. Now you can either do it with a filter or just get yourself a nice little piece of dried kelp, put it in the filter slot, that's only going to pick up the dried kelp for us. Now we're at the point where we can actually start powering things on. And to make that easier, we're actually going to remove the bottom two blocks of this item vault here, and we're just going to add those to the top instead. That way we can pull this belt power here and we can send that around to our encased fan, and then finally over to the gearbox that's controlling our contraption. So underneath our item vault, we're going to add down a regular gearbox, then a second regular gearbox. From there, we need to add in a shaft, another regular gearbox, then we need to add a vertical one, and a vertical one. And if we've done that correctly, yes, we are now blowing the campfire fumes. Then from this gearbox underneath our campfire, we're going to add in a vertical gearbox. Now this is where we need to be super careful. We need to kind of match our rotation to our contraption direction. Because as you can see, our contraption needs to spin clockwise. Now I've had a quick look and I think if we go ahead and add in a gearbox, then a vertical gearbox on top of that, and then a regular shaft. I don't know why I called it a regular shaft, but it should be a shaft. And yet we've got clockwise rotation, so now we need to take a brass funnel. We're going to throw it on the end of our storage interface. That's going to pull out all of the kelp, hopefully, and go into our buffer. But that should now be getting cooked and getting sent over to our item vault. We have 64 dried kelp. Nice! Now we can take this one step further and we can start to set up a little bit of a stockpile where we're going to have all of the belts that we're ever going to need because, well, we use a lot of belts. Especially if you're following any of my tutorials, you'll know that belts are kind of important and they're really, really useful. However, we don't want to use up all of our dried kelp. We need some of it to be stored in stockpile, mostly because we needed to make ourselves some tunnels and funnels of both brass and andesite. So having some stay in some storage somewhere will be very, very beneficial. So we need to find a way now to split our dried kelp into permanent storage and into belt crafting. And the easiest way that I can think of doing that is using our tunnels. So we're going to take a nice cheeky little belt over here now. And this is where we're going to have all of our kelp go out onto. But from this belt, we're actually going to split this off into a secondary belt. And this one doesn't need to be as long as the previous one. This is just where we're going to be having all of our kelp end up. So right here on the end, this is where we're going to have our permanent storage of our dried kelp. We just need to add in our funnel. And then on this belt, we're just going to add in two brass tunnels. But before we go ahead and actually extract our dried kelp, we actually need to set up the processing system. And for that, we're going to be using six of our mechanical crafters. And we're just going to plug them in the end right here. However, on the end of our belt here, we do need to add in a permanent block. That's going to stop our dried kelp from just spitting off the end. Now temporarily, I'm actually going to remove this first brass tunnel, because we're going to come around to the back now, we're going to right click with our wrench, and we're going to turn this into one single crafter. What that means is now when we pump an item into this mechanical crafter, it's going to then go across into all of these other crafters, and since we just need six dried kelp to make a belt, it's made our life a little bit easier. Then we're just going to rotate all of our crafters so they face to the top right, pop down an item vault for our belts to go into, we're going to add in our depot so we can actually extract those belts and then on there we're going to pop down a funnel and we're going to scroll this all the way up to 64 that way we have always got a stack of belts waiting for us on this depot and then all that's left to do is actually power our mechanical crafter and thankfully it's going to be very very easy because we've got a belt power over here pop a cog wheel on the end and a cog wheel on the end our crafter is now powered and as soon as we go ahead and start extracting our dried kelp 
as you get split across into our mechanical craft that's now currently going very very slow we can speed this up in just a moment we just want to make sure it works we should be now able to make ourselves a lovely conveyor belt that'll go into storage and it'll wait there then until we've got 64 and it'll spit it out onto the depot and the rest of it then should be going into our item vault now it's not perfect we could go ahead and set this to forced split that way it really does it waits for this one to actually clear before it then lets another lot through which is probably more ideal in this uh in this scenario so now we can actually speed our contraption up. Now I'm not going to make it go incredibly fast. We're not going to make it a max speed contraption. Mostly because whatever speed we set that to is what speed our contraption is going to spin at. And it could get quite insane quite quickly. You can obviously combat that if we go ahead and put a rotational speed controller in between these two right here. But what we should hopefully see now is all of our items are being held up in this main vault over here. Until we've got another craft complete. Then it should let some through into our crafters and then some into our item vault for main bulk storage. We can do the same again, put down a bead depot and a funnel and now we've got dried kelp waiting to be used for crafting. So that's going to do it for today. If you did enjoy yourself and learned something new then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye guys.